Hello everybody, today we get to talk about the newest entry in the Vacation movie series, simply titled Vacation. Kind of like the first movie, so that's not confusing at all, but, well, this one doesn't have the National Lampoon's name in front of it, so I guess technically it's different. Whatever. Vacation 2015, we'll just call it that. And before I talk about the new one, I guess I should at least briefly tell you what I thought about the rest of the series. Uh, the first movie, really liked it. It's a classic screwball comedy. A lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. The second movie, European Vacation, eh, it was okay. It, it had its moments. It definitely did, but definitely not as good as the first. Uh, then we had Christmas Vacation. I may be in the minority on this one, but that's my favorite one of the series. I really, really like Christmas Vacation. Definitely a fun movie. Perfect for the holidays. If you have not seen it again, I highly recommend it. Then we have Vegas Vacation, which... I honestly don't remember Vegas Vacation very well. There's probably a reason for that. I just, I kind of remember it being okay. Nothing really noteworthy there. I never saw Christmas Vacation 2, which was a direct-to-video movie focusing on the Cousin Eddie character, and from what I've heard, I'm not really missing much there, so there we go. And that brings us to the latest entry starring Ed Helms and Christina Applegate. I actually had a chance to attend an advanced screening of this movie, and boy was I surprised at the turnout, because it was amazingly low. That theater was not even half full, which kind of worried me because if you can't even convince a full theater's worth of people to see a movie for free, good luck getting them to pay for it. I mean, I have been to screenings before where I was turned away because they filled up the house and there wasn't enough room because they intentionally try to overbook these things to ensure a full house. Um, I mean, I got turned away from Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters for crying out loud. Like, Percy Jackson 2, full theater. Vacation, not even half full. Bad sign, right? Well, it was a bad sign for a reason, because honestly, this movie is not very good. If you want a plot summary, it's basically exactly the same as the original Vacation. It's the Griswold family driving across country to go to Wally World. Exact same thing. The only difference is, instead of Clark Griswold and family, it is now Rusty Griswold, the son who is now grown up, and his family driving across country. And they pretty much hit all the exact same points. There's even a place where they stop to visit some family, much like they did in the original, except instead of the Cousin Eddie character, they're visiting Rusty's sister Audrey. I was kind of surprised that the Cousin Eddie character even got a mention in this movie. It's a brief one, but it is there. He's not actually in the movie because, as I'm sure you're all aware, Randy Quaid is far too busy nowadays being a full-time crazy person to appear in a movie. And like the original movie, they even have some crappy car that they're taking across country that terrible things keep happening to, but apparently the people who made this movie saw the original and decided, you know what, we need to one-up this. But instead of one-upping it, they, like, 50,000 upped it, and it just goes way too far. It's just, it's too much. They really needed to rein it in. Apparently, the story here is that it's an Albanian rental car, because when you try to rent during Memorial Weekend, you gotta take what you can get. And I guess the joke here is Albanians don't know how to design cars, or at least that's what it seems like at first, because it's got two sets of rearview mirrors, but one is facing the opposite direction, so they're kind of pointless. And it has two gas tanks because it gets about 20 gallons to the mile. And it's also a plug-in hybrid, but when you pull the cable out, it doesn't retract, so it's just kind of hanging off the side of the car and catching on to shit as they're driving along. And it's got a second power cable for some reason. Don't know why it's there. It's probably not even connected to anything. But then there's also this weird little key fob that they have with about 20 different buttons on it, and they all do some really weird things. There's one that causes the rear bumper to detach, which is a weird design. Even Christina Applegate's character is like, why would you even design it that way? And I'm thinking, yeah, that's a very good question, actually, because you would have to deliberately design it that way. And there's the other buttons do things like there's one where that blows out all the windows, just instantly shatters them. There's a self-destruct switch, because of course there is. And all of this is stuff that, you know, makes no sense to put in a car, but you would have to deliberately design this stuff 
to do it that way, so clearly the Albanians did know what they were doing, and it's just one of those jokes that provides a couple of funny moments here and there, especially when they start messing with the GPS and it all of a sudden starts screaming at them in Korean every time they come to a new destination. But if you sit down and spend like half a second thinking about it, it just doesn't make a lick of sense. There are some jokes that start out kind of funny, but they just go on way, way too long. There's actually one right at the beginning of the movie. Um, apparently, the little brother keeps tormenting the older brother. Get it? Because it's backwards of how it usually is, and therefore it's funny. <laughs> I'll get to this in a minute, but apparently the little brother wrote, I have a vagina on the big brother's guitar, and the dad has a talk with him, which goes in a really weird direction about how, hey, you know what? Even if he does have a vagina, in today's gender-fluid society, that's okay. And I'm thinking, you know, this is a really weird direction. I did not expect this joke to go in, but it kind of works. But then it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then they finally wrap it up. Oh, wait, no, just kidding. It's still going. Like, God damn it. You had a funny joke movie and you ruined it. Oh. And speaking of the little brother, fuck this kid. Fuck all of this kid. Oh my god, I hated this character so much. This goes beyond, like, a brother tormenting another brother just because that's what brothers do. This kid fucking abuses his brother. And he is just downright evil. There is a point where they're driving to... Rusty's sister Aubrey's house to visit her and her husband Stone and the kids are like do you think Uncle Stone will let us ride his horses? I'm like yeah probably. Do you think he'll let us play with his guns? Oh god don't give this kid guns. Like, and fortunately the mom shoots it down right away like no he won't. And then the little brother looks at the big brother and says that's too bad because if he did I would shoot you right off that horse. And this is played for laughs. Oh dear God, no. That is not funny. That is fucking scary. Oh. Is it too late to do a really, really late term abortion on this kid? Because my God. Oh. Yeah, I went there. Fuck this kid. Fuck this kid. Oh. And it's not even the kid's fault. His acting was fine. He's just, he's doing what he can do with the material he's given to work with. It's just, the character is just such a fucking psycho. I want to punch him in the face many, many times. And then I want to go to the writers and do the same thing until the stupid falls out. And there are some jokes in this movie that just go nowhere. They mention that Audrey's husband Stone is a pretty conservative guy and kind of sets it up to let you think, oh, well, clearly there's going to be some awkward moments where he says something racist or something, right? No. No, that goes nowhere. The only remotely conservative thing that he does is insist that Aubrey stay at home and not work, even though she really wants to work and she's perfectly willing to work, but no, he doesn't want her. He wants her to stay at home. And that leads to some very, very awkward moments that I get the feeling they wanted the audience to find funny, but they really weren't. And God, is this really all they're doing with this character? Really, the only honest-to-God joke they have for this character is that he has a huge cock. Yeah, that's it. Huge. There are also a lot of jokes in this movie that rely on kind of raunchy, gross-out humor. And here's the thing. It's not that they were all terrible. There were actually some that were kind of funny, and there's certainly a place for humor like that, and even I can go for that kind of stuff once in a while, but this is supposed to be a vacation movie, and if you think back to the previous movies in the series, they were never really about that kind of humor. Honestly, that just makes it feel more like a hangover movie than a vacation movie, which I guess kind of makes sense as Ed Helms is in this, but, you know, the title is still Vacation, and it doesn't feel like a vacation movie with that kind of humor. There are some funny moments here and there, and most of them actually come from uh, cameo appearances. Like, uh, Charlie Day plays a whitewater rafting guide who 
ends up becoming kind of suicidal after his girlfriend suddenly dumps him, which is actually one of the funnier sequences in the movie, honestly. Uh, Norman Reedus shows up as a very creepy truck driver. Um, Keegan-Michael Key plays one of the Griswold's neighbors. He has a couple of funny moments. Towards the very end of the movie, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo show up, reprising their roles as Clark and Ellen Griswold from the previous movies. And apparently, Clark Griswold has gone senile in his old age. Um, that's actually provided some of the funnier moments in the movie, and it's really just a shame that they only showed up for a few minutes. This movie really could have used more of them. So yeah, I wanted to like this one, I really did, and you know, it's not that the acting was bad or anything, the acting was honestly fine, the actors are all doing great with what they have to work with, and it's well shot, it has a few jokes that are legitimately funny, but so many of them just fall flat, and again, this is pretty much just a retread of the exact same plot from the original movie, and if I wanted to see a retread of Vacation, I just watched European Vacation. We already got that. It's been done. If you're a fan of the original Vacation, don't bother with this one. It's just not worth it. And if you're not a fan of the Vacation series and you just want to see kind of a hangover style comedy, I would still say wait for a rental. That's the highest recommendation I could give this. And that's all I got to say about Vacation. So until next time, take care.